Hello everyone. Today, we're delving into Neo Stock's intricacies, dissecting the broader market landscape, and scrutinizing key technical indicators. But before we speculate on Neo's potential rebound next week, let's navigate the current Neo situation amid a 0.3% market dip and complex geopolitical factors. Stay tuned for a deep dive into these insights. I want to break down what's going on with Neo stock, what's going on with the overall market, and break down some very important technicals on it, and what's going on with all these different tickers. But before I do anything like this, before I answer the question about whether or not Neo could bounce next week in my opinion, anyway, suspect down, what's going on with Neo? And the market was down 0.3% as of right now. If you go there and look at the stock, it's still looking relatively weak as it's continuing to downtrend. However, NEO was showing some signs that it wants to bounce around this $10 area. And right now, there wasn't really any really bad fundamental news to cause NEO to tank like this, because remember, when you had its earnings, the margins weren't necessarily the best and they didn't miss on in revenue. But, but they ended up giving us some very strong deliveries which helped the share price start to push up even higher temporarily. So their deliveries have been strong, their numbers have been very very good. The reason why they're tanking has less to do with the company itself and more to do with geopolitical factors. Because if you look at what's happening today, guys, Biden, and Modi, who is the Prime Minister of India, they're actually meeting very very soon. They're going to be meeting at a conference. And this is very important, because if we look, tensions are rising between different countries. And this is playing somewhat of a role in why we're seeing some different pressures. There is news that China has banned its government officials from using iPhones. And then on top of this, we had some weak Chinese data. We saw some contraction in their economy as well. We saw their exports dropping as well. So all of these things together are causing many Chinese tickers to start to slow down. But despite that, despite the fact that that kept on happening and all these negative pieces of news, NIO had relatively strong deliveries. If you open their Twitter page and take a look, you will find details about deliveries. They did over 19,000 deliveries in just the month of August. So there are people talking about how there's slowdowns in China. China is failing this and that. Well, yeah, mean you can make that argument right. Things are still contracting over there. They still did over 19,000 deliveries in August or second best of all time. And they're still giving us some high deliveries if they keep this up with their very popular models. Especially as we approach key 4, the future could still be very bright for the company in my opinion. Now, on top of this, NIO also tweeted some great scenery in Norway. If you go and look, there are cars over there. They're getting more and more popularity and it just looks really, really aesthetic with the beautiful landscapes in the background. So very awesome stuff. It just shows how popular NIO is becoming and how great their cars still look. But despite how good their cars are looking, I just have to note that there are these external factors that are affecting the company outside of their vehicles, outside of their expansions, and we have to be prepared for this for a little bit longer. Now I think things are going to improve big time for the share price as we get into key 4 and we're getting very close to it. Just get ready guys. But until then, you know the market historically does tend to slow down for the month of September. If you look at NIO seasonality data, September, October tend to be like weaker months. September tend to be a little bit better for NIO, but October tends to be weaker. Historically, but this time around, even September could be weak for NIO because of the whole market. September tends to be the weakest month of the year for almost the entire market from, you know, spy to the other techers out there. So there's no surprise that NEO is getting dragged down. On top of this, the price ratio is a little weak, so there is still some relative weakness, not as strong as before and Mondays tend to be green about 49% of the time. I also want to add that when it comes to NEO, you will see the shares shorted continue to decline in volume. So it's not being shorted very hard despite how it's dropping 22 million was the volume so far today. We're almost at the end of the day today and the overall short volume is increasing just a little bit relative to price. So slight increase but nothing too wild so far. There's been some talk about NEO's margins. Their margins just haven't been the best. They didn't miss on guidance, 
but I think that the deliveries are going to get stronger and stronger over time. I'm still very optimistic for the longer term for the short term. There are hardships that are getting in their way from the macroeconomic factors, but I'm still very, very excited for what's about to come. So what about for next week? Could Nail get some kind of bounce? Here's my answer. If you look at Apple, Apple has a big event coming out. Apple is trying to respect an uptrend since yesterday. Since we dropped, we've been uptrending since. I know Apple's kind of like sinking right now, but that's okay because it still is on an uptrend overall and still looking. All right, and we're about to get a bullish cross on the IPO as long as we see some upside. Now next week, okay. When we approach next week on Monday, Apple has a very, very big event ahead of us. Apple is going to be unveiling potentially the iPhone. Now, why is this so important? Well, what's going to happen is as this thing begins to uptrend, we're going to see a pump approaching the events in my opinion and think the market's going to get a bounce on Monday. This may help NIO to some extent, but that's going to depend on what news comes out. Then after the event comes out on Tuesday, everything could change if Apple gets a rug pull or not. I'm not sure about that, but for now, until we approach Tuesday, the market should try to uptrend. If you look at Tesla, Tesla has been making higher highs and higher lows just very slowly on an uptrend right about here. So the question is, could we get this balance and try pushing higher? We're getting tighter, if anything, and if Tesla could hold above the 200 so far, it's holding above its EMA. SPY is going to likely just end up at 445, but we have this inversion in shoulder structure and a potential cross in the for a temporary push to the upside, so there is still potential. If you see, we've created a higher high and a higher low, and there is potential for it to attempt to go even higher, possibly reaching 448 or beyond towards these key levels. We also have this like gap that's unfilled at 449. I could see SPY pushing a little bit higher. So there's potential for Apple as well in this video. We have to try to hold support at the 200 EMA. If it holds and bounces, there's potential for a 448 to 450 is going to be a key support. So it looks to me like, okay, approaching Apple's events, the market should try to bounce. SPY should try to bounce push up just temporarily on Monday. So should Tesla, so should Apple, so should the Nvidia. These things should try balancing and pushing approaching Apple's big event. We also have this inverse and shoulders like structure on the Q. If you watch, it might try to move higher above 3.75 going into early next week. So the market may push up and this could add some bullish pressure for NIO. But the problem with NIO is that we're on this downtrend is starting to lose that really bearish momentum because it dropped yesterday. It's about 9.92 and that's where we hit today from this double bottom. There's a slight bullish divergence, but it's not really that significant and it's trying to base around $10 you guys get to observe quite clearly. So there's a potential bounce that could be coming to about 10.3 with the market. And I think that from a technical standpoint, the odds do favor NIO trying to push a little bit higher to like 10.2, 5 to 10.3. But here's the thing. There are no guarantees as of right now. There's no guarantee it's going to happen because it depends on the macroeconomic news. As long as there's no really bad news involving China and Chinese data, NIO should try to balance, and I think the odds favored NIO is oversold. It's been dropping like crazy for the last four days. So it's time for this thing to try to balance in my opinion. And if you can observe around 10.25, this previous resistance becoming or this previous support turning into resistance. I think Naya was going to bounce. That's my prediction. I think the odds greatly favor that. We are ready to talk about this. Let's see if this is possible. Look for a balance above 10 and see if NIO can attempt these figures. So hopefully this video is very helpful for everyone out there. I want the best for all of you. Please remain calm, cool, and collected. And I think there's a good chance that as long as there's no bad news from the economic standpoint or involving China, NIO should try to get back to 10.3 but we need to see it based around $10 first. If there's a bad news that comes out involving China, then yes, everything could change. But it's finally time for there to be a 10.3 test for NIO. All right, guys. 
So thank you for listening. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more stock predictions and market insights. Remember to turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update. Happy investing and see you in the next video.